Okay. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to this empty void. As you can see, I've made some adjustments to my virtual environment. I figure that the starry night aesthetic is ridiculously calming, and it's a very interesting design choice. And because it's not actually rendering moving graphics like the bubbles environment, it is ironically probably less intensive, at least in terms of rendering performance, especially on this mobile hardware. So I, I do really do enjoy it. It's it's an interesting little 3D effect, and I, and I quite like it. Uh, today I wanted to show you an update in terms of my progress on the digital museum. So I'm going to open up my applications and see if we can get this loading. Okay, loading the scene now. Let's see. Uh, there's quite a large number of objects loaded in this. Let's let's see if I can. Go back. Here's the lobby. I suppose it opened here. So I'll close this browser tab, and now we're entering the lobby, which is the introductory period. You'll see quite a few changes. Let's join the room accept the general setups, and press the button to enter the WebXR development area. And voila! As you can see, the general design is still roughly the same, but I've changed the background. This is a smaller image. The uh, area in which the easel is now over in this direction. The floor is now a marble texture, which is rather interesting. As I move forward and backward, You'll notice that the rendering ability of it starts to get somewhat interesting. Uh, it's a standard black canvas wall. I think that that's somewhat interesting. You can start to see the general formations of the... Uh, I basically created some objects to make it look... Uh, to create the illusion of there being a rope. I think that that's using too much in terms of object performance, but because it's a small scale image, it's not causing too much issues. Also on this side, there's an image of me! Woohoo! Isn't that fun? I actually have to put my name on things. I created a GIF, which opens the link to my personal website, which is interesting. Gigantic image of me, which is bizarre to look at, especially in a virtual environment. Standard credits. Pretty straightforward. Explains the situation. Uh, so today I want to show you the progress for the painting wing, which I've done quite a bit, at least in terms of the general aesthetics of things. So let's load the room and I'll show you the progress. I think that I've made quite a bit, at least in terms of just new features, and you'll see that there's a lot more objects in this frame, but you'll see why in a second. So we'll join the room, accept the areas, and voila! Uh, the easel is now in this location. I'm going to be using standard frame instead of teleportation just because it's easier. It does make people a little bit sick, so I'll try to keep that in mind. Uh, snap frame, I'll try to keep that to a minimum as well. So basically I added individual labels for each of the paintings that Caitlin Swift has created. The artwork is all pulled from her website, which is quite interesting. Uh, that Because it's not having to render from the page, the page weight is actually not that high, which is good. I think the actual page weight of this is about, uh, I wanna say, let's see, Probably 11 megabytes in terms of size, which is still fairly reasonable. It's not that large, especially given that you're loading all of this content. Uh, I'll teleport around and show you a rough view of all of the artwork that Caitlin's created. And this basically goes into full detail. There's quite a lot of work here. I think the average was about around 30. Uh, but it goes all the way, all the way from the timeline from uh, 2011 to 2021. Uh, the artwork loads and it comes into a much larger resolution, especially as you start to get closer to the material. You'll also notice a very interesting 3D effect that comes, at least in terms of the images that are loading. Again, this isn't the best resolution, at least in terms of the design aesthetic, just because I couldn't find high quality pictures of the artwork. Uh, eventually we will get that aesthetic fixed. But you will notice that it is fairly decent in terms of size, and there is quite a lot of artwork to look through. Uh, it's multiple wings, uh, of a, it's multiple rooms within a large-scale wing, and you're able to see the specifics of the brushstrokes, 
uh, especially as you get closer. Now again, the resolution is a little bit lower than what I would like for some of the artwork on, in this display, but it all just depends on the resolution of the image itself when it was taken and given the date for some of these artworks and the general way that the photo was taken. Some of it was just a quick glance, so it's not the greatest in terms of resolution, but eventually it will get better. You'll notice that the 3D effect definitely does become more noticeable for some of the artwork. Uh, but yeah, if you want to take a look at some of the artwork that she's created, it's really easy to do. Uh, all you have to do is just open the link that I provided in the description, and you'll be able to look around on either a mobile phone or a VR headset or whatever option you want. You can use it in a desktop. It really doesn't matter. It's just rendering a virtual environment that I've created. So you can use it on basically any type of hardware with a web browser, and I find that ridiculously useful. The effect really becomes noticeable, especially as you get closer to some of the artwork in this museum wing. Uh, basically, if you're curious whatsoever, please take a look. Uh, I guarantee you really appreciate it. And I'm leaving links in the description of almost all of the aspects of this. So, so please feel free to look around. I think you'll find something fairly interesting, especially in terms of some of the artwork that's available here. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's really only a few more paintings left to, to describe. Uh, again, this is only the first wing of the museum. There's substantially more artwork coming in the future, uh, particularly for uh, tattoos, which is up next on the docket. And yes, there's quite a bit to look around at, and this is the most recent one that was done in February of this year. Uh, as you get closer, you really can start to see the brushstrokes, which is quite fascinating, because you, you don't have to limit yourself to a frame. You basically are just pulling the static image, which allows you to see substantially more detail in terms of the artwork. And that's basically it for this update. Uh, there's really not much else to cover that, that I can think of. It's, it's pretty bare bones, but I did want to at least share some of the details that have been adjusted. So uh, thank you for watching. I really do watching. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot that you suck around this long, especially to see me blather on about specific development processes. But uh, if you like this video, please leave a comment, subscribe, do whatever you want on YouTube. That's basically just the process. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a nice day.